Hello there. So I wanted to go ahead and show you the login registration for the backend using Node, Mongoose, and Express. I'm also using Cores. I'm using JSON Web Token. I'm using Bcrypt as well. And I just wanted to briefly go over the process of setting that up. I'm not going to actually write any code in this video. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what I've done. So here on our nx.js is our server file. Um, so we're just importing in our Express, our Mongoose, our cores, and then we made a config file here to hide our JSON web token secret and then our MongoDB connection string as well. So I will not show you that. And then we're just uh, creating, we're activating our Express here, we're activating cores here as well. And then we have this um, const port here, which is going to, it's just pointing to our ENV. So that way, if we wanted to deploy this to like Heroku, we would use their port rather than the local host port, which I'm using locally, um, which we can see here. And then we have our app.listen. And then we have our Mongoose Connect. So we have our Mongoose connecting to our MongoDB. Again, we have our MongoDB con connection string, which is in my ENV. And then we're just um, also passing in our users routes here for login and, and registration. So then the next step, what you would want to want to do is you'd want to create your user model. Um, so we would create our user model using Mongoose. So we'd import Mongoose. We create our user schema here, create a new schema. And in this instance, I just have first name, last name, email, and password. You could all just still do something like display name. I mean, you can make that optional, but here I have everything required. And then our email must be unique. And then our password has a min length. And then we're exporting our Mongoose model here calling it user so we can access it later like in our routes um, and then we're passing our user schema and then now we're on to our routes so at the top here we're Im importing router which is um, using the express uh, package and then using the router from that express and then we have bcrypt which is going to be used so we can hash our passwords and generate a salt for it so that way it's super secure um, as of recording, there's been no one that's been able to break into the bcrypt hashing, so it is very, very secure. And then we're using JSON Web Token to authorize users. Um, so later on in the front end, if you wanted to have a user access certain a certain page, and if they're not logged in, then that's where you would use JSON Web Token for that for that property or that process. And then we have our user model that we're bringing in. And then we have this auth, which is our middleware, which is more useful later on when we want to delete a user. And I'll go into that as well. So first we got to create a register route. So we have our router creating our register here at slash register. It's an async function. And then it's going to wait um, stuff down the as we go into the function. So first we're going to pass our request.body, which is going to include our email password. We have a password checker. We have a first name, last name, and then um, we have some validations here. So I made it some validation notes that status code 400 means bad request, status code 500 means internal server error. And then we have, hey, if there's no email, password, password check, first name or last name entered, then we'll respond on the server side, hey, not all fields have been entered. Um, and it gives our status code 400. And then here we're checking our password length. So if it's less than five, we will say, hey, on the server side, the password needs to be at least five characters long. And then here we're checking the password against the password checker to ensure that the, the user that's inputting the data is has the same passwords that they're inputting in both fields. Um, and then we have here where we're gonna, when you, you know, create a new account, you want to make sure that the user isn't using an existing email in our database. So that's what we're doing here is we're creating our, we're, we're creating a, a variable here called existing email, which is going to be an await call. So it's just waiting for this call. And then it, we're going to go into our user model. We're going to do the dot find one, and then we're going to check our email and grab the email that's in our database. And then we're going to say, hey, if email exists, then we're going to say, hey, this count already exists, um, please, you know, use a different email. I might change this error message because it's a little, um, you know, actually this one's fine on the register screen, but on the login screen, you want to make sure it's a little bit more discreet and not so obvious. So that way hackers, if they try to hack into your, your account, they don't know if you have an account with this kind of, you know, this service, so to speak. And then down here, we're using bcrypt to hash our passwords. So we're creating a salt um, variable here, which is we're awaiting the bcrypt call. And then we're going to generate our salt. And then we create another variable called password hash. Again, it's an await uh, call here. And then bcrypt.hash, we're passing in our password that the user's entering. 
and then um, we're going to saltify that password when the user is signing up. And then here we're actually creating our new user. So we have our email and then notice here on the password, we're actually p passing in the password hashed uh, because again, it's already taking in that password and then we're saltifying it. Um, and then we're passing in the password hash and then just the, you know, the ever properties. And then here we're creating a variable called saved user where we're going to just go ahead and save the user. And then we're going to return a response in case, you know, so that way we know um, that the user's actually been saved. And then we have a try catch block for all of this to let us know if there's any errors. So that's the register. And then we have our login route set up, which is just going to slash login. Same kind of thing. It's just going to take in the email and password. Again, if they're, uh, if one of these fields are missing, return, hey, you need to enter in one of these fields. And then here we're again doing the same thing. We're going to ensure that the email that is being passed is in our database. If it's not, then we're going to say, hey, no account with this email has been registered. This is where I could say invalidate credentials as well to be more secure. So I might change that later on. And then here we're creating an is match. So what this is doing is we're going to have our bcrypt compare our password that's being entered on the front end. And then we're going to compare the user.password that's in our database. And if they match, then we'll go ahead and log them in. Otherwise, it will say, hey, this password doesn't exist, essentially, um, with our hash password. And then we're here, we're creating our token. So what we're doing here is we're creating our token, and then we're grabbing the user ID, and then we're passing our secret here, um, which is a password. And then that's going to give us a JSON object, which is going to respond to the JSON web token right here. And then it's going to give us all the information regarding that JSON web token, which would be like the user ID, the first name, the last name, and the email. And then we have another catch error here as well, if there's anything going wrong. And then we have our delete user account. So in this particular applications or applications going forward, I, um, again, is setting all this up as a boilerplate template for myself. So I can just download this GitHub and just run with any application I want to create. But here in our, we have a delete route, just that slash delete. And then we have this auth function, which is running. So let's go ahead and go into the auth function and talk about that and what that is doing. So here we are passing in our JSON web token. Really what the auth is doing is just checking to make sure that the token that's being passed is a valid token or not. Otherwise, if it's not, then they can't delete their account because we don't want anybody just to delete other people's accounts. So we're making sure that the ID that the user is on matches with their token. Um, and if it doesn't, then we, we can't allow them to delete. Otherwise, we will. So that's pretty much what this is doing. We're grabbing the token here and we're checking with the header, which is X auth token, which is the JSON web token authorization. And then we're going to go to, we're going to create a variable called verified, um, which is just passing in our token that we grabbed earlier. And we're passing our secret to make sure that all the information with this token is correct and associates with the user ID that we're actually grabbing, which you can see here. And then we have this next. So next is basically saying, um, if we go back to our user route, so we go here, we run this, we run this function. And then next is saying, okay, carry on with the rest of this function for this route. And then we have another try catch block here. Here we're just saying, okay, let's go ahead and grab the delete user. So we're going to go find the user dot find by and delete or find by ID and delete. So we're grabbing the request dot user. So this request here is holding all the information from our auth, um, which you can kind of tell in this here. So we're, we're grabbing the token, we're storing it all in this request dot user, um, which has the ID, has you know the name, the email, so on and so forth. And then um, we're going to just return a response, a JSON response with the deleted user. Um, so we can see that down in the terminal. And then we're going to go ahead and we're, we have this other one here, which is just the validation. This one I'm not going to talk too much about because it's more useful for the front end, which is like, for example, if we wanted to make sure that a JSON web token is valid, then we'll display this, this web page. Um, so I'm not going to go into this one uh, too much. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and use Postman to check all our routes to ensure that everything's working. Um, so as you can see here, we have the email password, password check, first name, and last name. So if we get rid of email, we're going to see send, and it's going to say, hey, not all fields are entered. Um, we'll do it with the passwords. So we'll say send password. The password needs to be at least five characters long, and so on and so forth. So um, 
any fields that aren't entered correctly um, will not match. We can even check with the password checker. Passwords do match. match. Please try again. Um, so now we'll go ahead and create our user. So create. And this is the input that we get here. See the password is being completely decrypt and hashed here. So we have this hash passwords that's now stored into our database. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into login user. So that was login user two. And we're going to go ahead and um, it's going to say, hey, there's no submit here. I think I left out the R when I created it. Yes, I did. So get rid of that. And then it will send. And now it's going to generate this JSON web token. It's going to give us an ID, first name and last name and email. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this user. So first we need to grab the JSON web token. And then we want to go to the delete method here. If you go to headers, we're passing in the X auth token. And then we're going to pass in this JSON web token. And then we're going to go ahead, before I delete, we'll say, we'll send with like a broken, hey, unexpected error, fix that. Um, if we leave this blank, it's going to be like no authorization token, which is the error I created. And then if we have the correct requirements, we'll send that. And now it's going to return, hey, this has been deleted. And then um, if we tried to log in with this user again, it's to say no account with this email has been registered. So that is the everything is working from the, the node backend. So I just wanted to show you guys this really quick brief overview. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video.